What an awesome day and a great delight to be here on Dove Television and Healthy Living. My name is Oluwafemi Odunton. Always give thanks to God at every given point in time that we are alive to see a wonderful day. If you're just watching us or you just tuned to Dove Television and you want to know what Healthy Living is all about, it's about your health, my health, your health. Always taking the right vegetables, always blending your smoothies together, drinking it. Part of what we tell people is more of exercise. Find time to rest. All this and many more we do here on Healthy Living. I'm not here alone, but before I introduce our guest to you, like us on Facebook, tweet at us, get to watch exciting and interesting edition of all our programs on our YouTube channel. And if God has laid it in your heart to sponsor any of our programs, Please feel free to always call us and be part of Job Television family. God bless you and your entire families in Jesus' name. Amen. We have Pastor Stephen Simindu here with us. And uh, Pastor Simindu Stevens is the head of environmental health section in the Redeemed Christian Church of God. We are here to talk about something very important that a lot of us tend to look away from it. And uh, I want to say thank you for coming, sir. Um, it's a great honor to always have you on this program. We thank God. We thank God. We thank God for the good works the Lord is doing. Amen. With this uh, great uh, organization, Dove Amen. Media. The Lord yeah. will increase Dove Vision Amen. in Jesus' name. Amen. From the top of the management to the list of you. Amen. We celebrate God in your life. Amen. God thank bless. you so much, sir. And thank you for coming. And a big thanks to all the doctors out there for coming to Dove Television to enlighten us day by day on our health. We want to say kudos to you and God will bless you and keep you safe at every point in time in Jesus' name. Amen. Please come along with us and be part of today's exciting edition of Healthy Living. We'll always give thanks to God Almighty. And in doing so, we'd we'll like Pastor uh, Simindo Stevens to please lead us in a short prayer while we proceed. Thank you, Shall sir. we pray? King of kings and Lord of Lord, we want to thank you for life. Thank you, we want Lord. To thank you for your faithfulness over our lives. Thank you. Thank you for keeping us. Thank Lord, you. as we go into this presentation, we ask Holy Spirit Divine that you lead us. In the name of Jesus, Amen. for everyone listening all over the world, we pray that you reach out to your people. Amen. You heal the sick, O oh God. Amen. You encourage the discouraged. Amen. And you keep us safe. Thank Amen. you for hearing. Thank In you, Jesus' Lord. name, I pray. Amen. Praise be to God. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. All right, please be part of this edition because we'll be looking at the topic, Lassa fever. Uh, for many years ago, or quite some few months ago, yes, we talked about um, Lassa fever, I think the early year of last year. And we look at um, this, um, you know, we call them rodents, right? We look at them rodents, yes, we call them rodents. We look at them and see how they, you know, perch on our food. A lot of times we get to buy all these uh, foodstuffs in the market and we see some little, little, you know, jet droppings and we just look at and overlook it. A lot of us have eaten something that we <laughs> use it together, you know, to eat um, our swallow mm -hmm. and some might just be in the rice or in the beans and we just overlook it and say, well, I can't die. You know, there's this uh, word we used to say when we were young that um, uh, disease does not kill a black man. Uh -huh. <laughs> When we are young, we joke a lot about some of those things. Absolutely. So, but now, <clears throat> now, I just want us to look at it because it's, it's very serious and um, it's something that we have to pay attention. It's like most of us that are market women, market sellers, and for those that, um, you know, we go to the market every day. We go there to buy this food stuff. So, let's look at, let's just refresh our mind again and uh, look uh, at what Lassa fever uh, is all about. Thank you so much for this platform given to us to advocate and create awareness uh, because we know uh, that education is important mm. and uh, information is power, mm. you know. And more importantly, whatever you give to your environment, environment will as well return back to you uh, now and in the nearest future, you know. What we are seeing today is basically because of our last city because of our lack of being proactive, mm. because of not considering, you know, the health of people as uh, important in the part of an individual, in the part of governments, you know, and at large, our responsibility that we are not taking promptly. So, Lassa fever is a silent killer. Mm. 
you know, it's not a new disease. It has been, you know, on years past. You know, we, we I think I was here two years ago mm. to advocate on this incidence of uh, outbreak of Lassa fever. Mm. Now, you know, it's also ravaging now in Nigeria. You know, so this is a disease that is an acute disease in nature, you know, and uh, we, the history of the disease, it all, it all began in the year 1969 wow. here in Nigeria in a community called Boronu, you know, uh, in Boronu State, you know. So the community is Lhasa, you know, so and, you know, major outbreak of disease is named, you know, uh, at the point that it happened, you know, mm. so that's why it's named Lhasa. That community so the name from, of that community you know, is Lhasa. Lhasa. So the community is in uh, Bronu State, you know, wow. in the northern part of Nigeria. Mm. You now, missionary, two missionaries came around to, uh, they are missionary nurse, nurses, so they came around to carry out their duty within the community, you know, and they were infected with this uh, uh, disease, mm. you know, and both of them died. You know, the two nurses died before they diagnosed and they discovered that uh, they were infected with uh, uh, an organism called Lassa uh, virus. So the virus had been in existence since that time. And we've not been taking Congress's uh, responsibility to tame the effects of mm. this uh, uh, virus, you know. So there's a particular species of rodents, okay. you know, from the Multimamid uh, uh, family called Mastomy. This rodent is very small in nature. So this rodent, you know, who be infected with this virus. Mm. And this rodent has mechanism to survive the virus within itself, you understand, and transmit this disease, mm. you know, from one place to, to another. another, you understand. So, uh, you know, what encourages this uh, disease mostly, particularly during the dry season, is deforestation, okay. you understand. Deforestation, burning of bushes, you understand, which disrupt the animals, you understand. Mm. So they want a place of survivor, they want a place of abode. So the nearest place of abode, you see all these animals, mm. you know, uh, finding a place of abode with the organism already infected with uh, this virus, virus, you understand. Mm. And unknown to us that all these organisms also live with us. Live around yes, us. Yes, they live around us because you have bushes environment, mm. you have people cutting grasses, you know, disturb the aquatic animal, disturb the habitant, you understand? So all these animals also want to survive. Okay. So in the process of surviving, you understand, they look for the nearest place of abode. They look for a place to have their nest, you understand? So, and they visit our homes, mm. they visit our community. Mm. So what are we to do? That's why we are here. Mm, what are we to do? Mm. That's why we're here to give Absolutely. out information, yes, information to information. Because viewers. This, 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 this organism we're talking about, this virus we're talking about, is killing people gradually. Mm. You know, the, 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 the casualty rate now, is prevalence rate is higher than COVID. Really? Yes, in Nigeria. Wow. The data we have now, mm. as such now. You understand? The same thing on snake bites. You understand? And all this could be traceable to disruption of the a place of abode. Mm. So when the habitants are being disrupted, you understand, through the burning of bushes, through deforestation, you understand, they want to survive. So they moved. And some of these organisms are, you know, and vector of disease, some of them are infested with uh, viruses, they are infested with uh, dangerous organisms. Mm. You understand? Mm. So they move and they lived with us. Mm. So in the process, of surviving, they transmit these diseases, mm. either through bites, through their secretion, through their dropping, you understand, mm. through their urine, you understand me now, so, and through their blood, mm. you know. So this is a mechanism by which they transmit the disease. Mm. So how do, we, how do we identify this, you know? Mm. We, we have several of them around us. Just Absolutely. like you said, that we Absolutely. have a bush around mm. us. We have Absolutely. several of them. Around. Some of them, we even come out and be looking for what to eat. And you're like, wait, hey, leave this place. You know, I think we are talking to you. You be done. Yeah, you must be. Now, you now ma so mass, ma you ma mass tummy uh, species of uh, rats that transmits lots of virus, you understand, is about six centimeter long. Okay. You understand? It's very small. You understand? And it has patches around 
the abdomen. Okay, so sorry, sir. Please, uh, to my director over there, I have some images of uh, some of the species. Can we have them just display, just the images alone? Um, you know, I have them so that we can just get to see, uh, viewers can get to understand that, okay, when you see a certain rat like this, you get to know that these are the rats that transmit um, Lassa fever around. God bless you. Now, uh, also, at the abdomen, it has multi nipple. Okay. It compares to all other female rats. You understand? Mm. This particular species of rat mm. has about 15, 12 uh, nipples mm. uh, at the abdomen. You okay. understand? With white patches okay. all around. Mm. Uh, we, we, we just carry out general deratization on camp now. It's still ongoing. You understand? Uh, I brought some images of hundreds of rats mm. that. Uh, uh, we're, good, we're able to kill, you mm. understand, and sanitarily bury. Okay, so, we, we, so have, you know. we have an, an image there on okay. the screen. Now, now this, okay, this is the organism called multimamids. Okay. So this is a species of rats that mm. has mechanism of aborning the virus we're talking about. Okay. You understand, in a system, mm. you know, mm. and it can survive for long duration. Really? and mechanically transmit these organisms okay. through you know, wearing on the food item that is not properly protected, mm. through dropping, through urine, you know, urinating on the food item that is not properly uh, mm. protected. Mm. And more importantly, we have people that also eat uh, bush meats. You understand? Okay. So you can, be, you can take this as a uh, Some people see, yeah, some people see wow. eat this, uh, this right we're talking about. You're all knowing to them mm. that they are being infected with... Uh, with the virus we're talking about. Okay. So lack of uh, uh, hygiene practice, yeah. poor environmental sanitation, encourage uh, all these animals, you understand, to survive mm. in an environment. Mm. And that's why advocacy is important. Mm. You know, you knowing what to do is important. Mm. You understand, because the head of one is the head of all. You mm. understand? So this organism we're talking about now, like I told you, the data we receive at the moment, you know, the prevalence rates at the moment, at the present uh, data we receive, is higher compared to COVID. Really? Yes, in Nigeria. Okay. You know, uh, no, why? Because people are not taking cognizance uh, step uh, to are, take care of oh, their environment. Okay. You understand? Attention is driven to COVID. curative. Mm -hmm. You understand? Okay. You know, and less attention is given to preventive Preventives. medicine. You understand? Okay. So okay. what we need to do is that, okay, we, we, we've sat down to look at, okay, this, all these animals survived in an environment. All these animals also multiply rapidly in an environment. Mm. Now, what do we need to do? We look at the historic uh, history of this animal. Okay. You want to look at, okay, their means of survival. What is their lifespan? You understand? What is the food that attracts them? You understand? So they love dirty environment. Mm. You understand? So issue of waste management has to be considered. Mm. How do you manage waste in an environment? You see some of our community, waste will be dumped, you understand, at the drainages. Waste will be dumped at the water body. All this encourage all these uh, dangerous organisms mm. to survive. Mm. And they give back, you understand, to the environment. They give back whatever you give to them back to the environment. Mm. They can infest your, your loved one, they can infest your children. Mm. You understand? You know, so that's why cleanliness is very, very important. Mm. Environmental sanitation is very, very important. Mm. You know, implementing policy that will sustain, you understand, preventive medicine is important. So as we advocate uh, clinical medicine, as we advocate for, uh, you know, uh, provision of uh, drugs to take care of the patients infected, mm. we need to also take cognizance step that, okay, uh, the mm. overgrown weeds around the environment, uh, uh, waste we management, both liquid and solid, be promptly, you understand. Taking care, care of. Okay. You know. um, so I think um, um, uh, the, the Lassa fever is more of a, uh, is not a noisy pestilence, mm. just like COVID. Silent killer. It's just a silent killer. Now, when COVID came, a lot of us were just going around. Okay, no. there's another mm. image of uh, no, 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 the health that, worker yeah, you yeah, know, these are, cleaning these, up. This, this is redemption camp, mm. somewhere around the camp. Uh, after the processes that will deratterize the environment, okay. we use a uh, uh, chemical substance mixed mm. with food items as a bait for them. 
overnight. You understand? So overnight, you see them because they are food attractants. Food, yeah. You know, as soon as they eat those baits, you understand. Within three hours, it cut off their intestine. You understand? Okay. But they are dangerous organisms. So even after killing them, adequate step has to be taken. Okay. You understand? So that they, the dead one will not infest the environment mm. because they can act as droplets. I mean, as a atropod, you understand? So they can infest their atmosphere, you understand? The secretion, if it dry, it can go into the environment. So what also. we do is that the dead one will be collected okay. and be sanitarily buried. You see our workers moving around. These mm. are hundreds of rats, you know, killed on camp. Mm. You understand? Like I said, sometimes they go. You may not be able to eradicate them, but you can reduce their population. Mm. And that's why... This you is know, one of collective that, effort mm. is, a, is important. Mm. You know, implementing policy to regulate individual, to regulate an organization mm. on taking cognizant step, you understand, by taking care of your environment. Mm. And that's one of the, uh, the activities that we carry out on camp, you mm. understand, by ensuring that individual residents take care of the environment. Okay. And failure to do that, you can be as well. That's another uh, one sanctioned. showing how now, it's so been buried. Is, thank you. After the the dead one had been picked, hmm. you see, sanitarily, uh, it has to be buried. Hmm. This is a process of reducing their population. You may not be able to eradicate them, okay. you understand? And that's why every month, monthly, we plan on general deratization hmm. of the major drainage, you understand, surroundings, you understand, and uh, residents, uh, auditorium, you understand, where are people come to congregate and worship, you understand? We ensure that those environment be disinfected, be deratarized against all this uh, dangerous uh, vector of disease. You know what came to my mind? Uh, a lot of people watching us will say, oh, the people in camp are really enjoying you know, all these <laughs> things is just provided for them. How about those of us living outside camp? Thank that we you. don't stay within camp, we don't stay within the Ogo State. Mm. Do we, how do we go about ours? Now, ad advocacy information is important. That's why we are here that whatever information you have now or you are exposed to, don't keep it to yourself. You understand? Ensure that such information, you make use of it mm. and pass information across to others. You understand? I said something about disruption of uh, habitants. Mm. You understand? So all these animals, you understand, as soon as they disrupt their place of habitat, you understand, they look for the next place to survive. Mm. You understand? You know, and the next place to survive are either your accumulated loads your abandoned loose or the abandoned building or the overgrown weeds around your environment. They just want to survive. They want mm. a place of abode. Do you understand? And they need food. So as soon as they get a place of abode, the next thing is food. So they look forward, your food remnants, the, the waste bin around your environment, uh, your waste bin promptly managed. Mm. Uh, are there evidence of accumulated uh, waste around your place? Probably they've turned your are surrounded to dump sites. You understand? Definitely, all these organisms we want, we breed rapidly because mm. there's food availability, mm. there's what there's place of our board. Mm. So what we need to do is that we need to advocate for general cleanliness. Cleanliness. Mm. You understand? It's a collective effort because if we can reduce their population, their population density, you understand? The implication of their population density, we rapidly, you understand, minimize all the clinical effect. Mm, okay. For example, now if we don't have anyone, you know, infected with Lassa virus, then there wouldn't be any, you know, demand on the diagnosis. Mm. There wouldn't be any expenses to what to incur all the treatments. Why? Because we'll be able to take adequate step on the preventive. Okay. But you see, individual, we ignore the preventive aspect. Okay. We focus on the treatment, the treatment. on the clinical. Okay. Provision of diagnosis uh, uh, mm. items, equipment, uh, provision of drugs. We focus on that at the detriment of what? Prevention. Okay. So and that's why individual, corporate organization, you know, private organization like I'll stand off our father and the law. You know, daddy is so keen on Cleanliness. Hmm. I remember a few, uh, few months ago, that he sent a message to our office through the camp manager office that we should deratrize the ever. I now told the person that I said, look at our schedule of duty. Hmm. There are a few days 
we are doing. So, you know, it's a continuous exercise because you can't eradicate them, hmm. all these organisms, hmm. but you can reduce, reduce their population. And population. as soon as their population is being reduced, the, 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 the arm, the implication on the health, on the property will be minimized dras drastically. Wow. Wow. So more of advocacy. Advocacy, and more of awareness, awareness. And indiv that individuals everyone... should take responsibility. Hmm. Because if I disinfect my environment, for example, hmm. now, mm -hmm. you know, there's a difference between uh, deratarization and disinfection. Okay. Now, because on the organisms of rodents, there are other organisms that you can't see with your naked eyes called flea. So even after you might have deratarized your environment, killing the the vector of disease, which is the rodent, hmm. you understand. There are other organisms that it, it will be through the haze of microscope before you can detect the Detected, organism because okay. it's, a, it's, it's a microbe. You understand? Coughly. This organism also can infect human beings. You know, wow. yes, it can cause what we call leptospirosis, you know, disease, you know, uh, that affect human beings that will be having constant uh, urination that deteriorate the health, wow. you understand, and then get fever, mm. this particular species of organism. So that's why we advocate for deratization and disinfection, which we know as fumigation, mm. you understand, through the uh, uh, skin personnel, mm. you understand, mm. someone that is empowered to do that, mm. you know. So every resident, mm. particularly eateries, uh, schools, supermarkets, hospital, hospitals. where you have constant patronage of different people coming in, mm. you understand. Mm. Because anyone can come with the virus, anyone can come, I mean the organism which is a vector of disease, as well can, you know, invade your environment. So individual that may have been infected with the virus, you understand, you can disinfect your environment to neutralize and tame the effect of the virus in an environment. Also, you can physically, you understand, kill this uh, vector of mm. disease, which is maxtomy, the rat we're talking about now. So uh, the effect can be reduced. So both deratization, disinfection should be the... advocated for. Okay. You understand? And skip personnel, you understand, should be engaged. Okay. You understand, to ensure that uh, disinfection is carried out at Inter. Thank God for redemption camp. Okay. You know, during the COVID, by the special grace of God, we were grand yeah, regularly. Yeah. You know, disinfecting streets, mm. you know, uh, cars, you know, car parks. You know, why? Because we knew that if the, uh, those organisms can be tamed drastically, their effect will be neutralized. neutralized. You understand? But when yeah. people just ignore cleanliness, people ignore general sanitation, your environment is so dirty, you know, you are living you know, within the, uh, you know, accumulated refuse, you understand? Number one, your earth is exposed to a threat. Mm. And number two, you are breeding sources for all these dangerous organisms mm. to infect the global world. Now, I, I want to, a question came into my mind now, because we know that yeah, a lot of time people want to wait till the last Saturday of the month before um, sanitation. Must we do this all the time? Must it be every day or once in a month or twice in a month or three times in a month? You know, as long as an health officer is coming in. Are you talking in. about the deratization? Yeah, deratization. Or the dis, or the, both. Uh, both. We are, look, we are looking now, at both now. The now. standard policy uh, by the body that regulates us, which is Horecon, Environmental Regulation, uh, Environmental Health Officer Regulation Council of Nigeria. Hmm. Now, the policy is that Eateries, because of constant uh, food remnants, yeah. eateries should be disinfected once in a month. Okay, for eateries. Yes, both disinfection and, and deratization. So as to, read, like I use the language, reduce that. You can't eradicate them. Mm. To reduce their population mm. and the effects they cause on man's health okay. and property. Mm. You understand? To reduce it drastically. So like uh, schools. And the school should be disinfected three times in a year. Okay, beautiful. And supervised by a licensed environmental health officer, empowered to carry out such, uh, such assignment. For example, on camp now, all our eateries are being regulated by our departments. Okay. You understand? And after the deratization, we issue what we call certificate of deratization. After each 
uh, disinfection, which we we'll use the layman language fumigation. Now mm. we issue circuits of uh, disinfection okay. that okay, your environment has been disinfected against underlisted pests of public health importance. Mm. You understand? And signed by and, and someone that is empowered to do that, which is environmental health officer. You okay. understand? But it's discovered that a lot of people outside. I'm using Redemption Camp as an example. Mm. We have some other area outside the camp that they don't do that. Mm. And that's why advocacy is very, very important. Mm. You understand? Okay. Ensure you can go to your nearest uh, health uh, office, mm. complain to them that you need general deratization, sure. general fumigation of, uh, I mean, general deratization and disinfection of your environment. Mm. They will surely come. The first thing they will do is to what? Do what we call general assessment. Mm. You understand? Because they want to know what is happening within your resident. Are there openings mm. for all these organisms to have access into your environment? Okay. The opening has to first of all be blocked. Mm. You understand? Is your windows, uh, there are openings at your window. We're not talking about in... rats alone. Mm. Snake as well come mm. in. You okay. understand? You know, so you, we'll do general assessment and we'll now recommend what you need to do. And it has to be a periodic uh, exercise. All right. Thank you so much, sir. At this point, because we're still coming back to look at the signs and symptoms of it all on human. Uh, you know, sometimes we eat some things and we just felt, oh, I think I had um, poison or I think I've eaten <laughs> rat poison or I've mm. eaten something that is just, you know, affecting my job. Yes. So, sir, so we're coming to that. Uh, to all our viewers watching us, please, we'd like to go on a quick break. When we come back, we'll still have our healthy living uh, with us here in Dove Television and our guest is still with us. We'll be right back. Don't go away. Thank you. God does not change. What we have is the God of miracles. And it doesn't change. All right, welcome back. Still on Healthy Living on Dope Television. It's high time to pick up your phone and dial the number that will be displayed right there on your TV screen. Remember to tell us your name and where you are calling from. And if you're calling and the line seems busy, kindly do send us a text message indicating your name. And please um, tell us your question. We'll be glad to hear from you. We still have our guest here with us in the house, Pastor Simindo Stephen here with us. He's the head of environmental health section here in the Redeemed Christian Church of God, Redemption Campground, Moe. Ogun State, Nigeria. So uh, now, so we want to look at the signs and symptoms of it on us as individual. What are those signs and symptoms? No, no, the signs and symptoms are in various. Uh, we have the mild signs and symptoms. We have the severe signs and symptoms. For the mild one, you know, like I told you that the uh, incubation period is between one to three weeks. Okay. Now, at the inception of the infection, for example, now maybe the person just had the, the contact to the virus. Okay. You understand? We have um, the signs and symptoms, uh, 6 to 21 now, days. you have 6 to 21 days, which is the first week. Okay. You know, from 7th to 14th uh, day, which is the second week. Okay. From 7th to uh, 21 days, which is the, uh, the severe state, which is the third week are you wow. getting so that's why i said the sign and symptom i mean the incubation period is between one to 21 days so okay. at the first first week mm. the person may be having fatigue. what we call fatigue mm. headache mm. you understand mild yeah. fever mm. you understand uh, by the time we we'll get to the second week the person may be having what we call swelling of face wow you understand that that it shows that the uh, digestive organ is infected already. Mm. You understand? You know, blood could not circulate appropriately. Mm. You understand? The person will be having swelling of face. Mm. And by the time we get to the third week, mm. you know, there will be reddish of eyes. Wow. You understand? Blood will be coming out from every openings. From nose the nose, from the yes, yeah. from the mouth, from the eyes. You understand? From the anus. Low blood pressure. And low blood pressures. 
Seriously. Absolutely. This so, is not different than them, you know, when you say someone has uh, serious, Ebola. Ebola. No, so, but oh. this is more of silent killer than Ebola. Jesus. Ebola is violent mm. and severe. Mm. Are you getting it? They have similar signs and symptoms, but Ebola is more of a, a contagious in nature. You understand? Okay. For someone that have last sana, you can still sit with the person. You understand? You can still have a handshake with the person. Do you understand me now? Compares to uh, COVID, COVID and, <laughs> and Ebola. Ebola. Do you understand mm. me now? So, now because of the nature of the virus we're okay. talking about, mm. you understand? So, now the signs and symptoms is what we have had. Mm. But what we are advocating for here is that take care of your environment, take care of yourself. Okay, we'll come back to take care of the environment. We have Marvelous from Lagos. Hello, Marvelous. Yes, ma. Thank you for calling. Please go ahead with your question. Okay, I say, how can we do? I'm from that, lo uh, that location that you call, from Bruno State, Lhasa, in community. Hmm. Okay, I'm trying to... Ma? Okay, how those people that still know you, but this is what it is. Of this, you see, it is that as you said that 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 language that you say is more difficult. I see it, I see, it, I see it affecting them. How can we do with those people? Okay, uh, marvelous. We can really um, hear what you're saying uh, because uh, the line is cutting off at a point. So it's just, you know, I think you're also listening to your television. Please send us a text message. We'll be glad to hear from you. But I know you live in Ilasa Maja in Lagos. Mm. No, okay, in, so uh, please. In the, at the north. At the north. Oh, yeah, okay, that's what fine. Broad uh, but, oh, really? All right, uh, but <laughs> it's all Lagos. All right, marvelous. Please kindly send us an SMS. We can barely hear you and hear what you're saying because um, some of it was just cutting off and you're coming back and forth. Please call us back or you send us an SMS. Thank you. Okay, uh, sir, please, how, what can we use to eradicate rats and cockroaches? Peace from Ogun State. No, thank you. Uh, basically, cleanliness is number one, advocacy, and uh, health education I need to give to you here. Cleanliness. Take care of your environment, discard your waste, don't keep uh, waste within your environment, mm -hmm. leftover food should be discarded daily, you understand? And ensure that your kitchens uh, are properly arranged, food uh, stores should be well kept in a container that is covered, you understand? So once in the month, like I said, for each you disinfect your environment, you deratterize your environment, and engaged a licensed environmental health officer. Mm. You know, just like someone wants to dispense uh, uh, drugs now or medicine that has been prescribed to you, mm. there are people that have been empowered to dispense that uh, uh, either the ingestion for you, you understand? Mm. So um, you, you'll be given prescription on what you need to do. So your environment will first of all be assessed and there are chemicals that you can see you. We have mm. some insecticide mm. that you can use. But when it comes to uh, eye infestation of all this uh, mm. vector of disease, like cockroaches, like rats we've just talked about. Now there's a mosquito there mm. that is highly infested Then you engage uh, as key personnel that is trained mm. in that regard. But if it's still residential area that you just want to disinfect them, you can get some insecticide, you understand, but ensure that before you disperse, read the label to follow the adequate uh, Instruction. instructions. All right, thank you, sir. Uh, is Lassa fever only gotten from animals or is there any other means of infection? Thank you. This is uh, Dolly from Rivers. No, no, as of today, the uh, causative. Uh, uh, agents for Lassa fever is multimamid rodent called mastomy. The species of the rat is called mastomy. That's the that's a vector of disease that can that the virus can survive within the uh, host. Hmm. You understand? That's the rat we're talking about. All right, uh, we have a caller, Lawal from Lagos State. Hello, Lawal. Thank you for calling. Thank you. Thank you. 
Um, I think the network is kind of breaking. Hello? Please, uh, Lawa, can you please send us an SMS? I don't know what's wrong with the network, uh, just like Marvelous called earlier on. So um, I think the network is busy, or we have a lot of people on the line trying to call to ask questions. Uh, so it's breaking. Please, uh, there's a line for text and another for call. Uh, kindly call, send an SMS. We'll be glad to read out your SMS and where it's coming from. Thank you so much, and God bless you. All right, so, uh, you, you know, we've looked at the signs and symptoms of um, Lassa fever. I think now a lot of people will start getting serious about it, <laughs> you know, because we are all concerned about COVID, the second wave, the mm. third wave, and all that stuff. The fourth wave. Uh, the fourth wave, and every one of us, we're just trying to distance ourselves. Or, you know, or... we can't even sit just <laughs> <laughs> No, but God, God is helping us I'm now. I'm telling now. you, God the, has the, been... The siege is over. The siege is Absolutely over. Absolutely over air, all over the world. And there's fresh miracles. air now. Yes, now. So, but what, what we are saying is that don't live in an unhygienic environment. environment. Hmm. You understand? God has given us, you know, grace to have information around us. God has helped us to, you know, have the right tools in there. The, you know, in the right places, you know. So make use of the information you have. Make use of the personnel that have been saddled with this uh, responsibility. You understand? If you are having issue with your waste management, consult the people saddled with that. If you are having issue on pest control, consult the people that are what, uh, saddled with that. And I want to encourage corporate organization, you understand, that more of attention should be given to uh, preventive medicine. Mm. More of attention should be driven towards cleanliness in an environment. You mm. understand? You know, now, now, very soon now we'll be going to rainy season. Yes. You know, you know mm. drainages should be what? Hopeful for free flow of uh, rainwater. You understand? Mm. So, you know, overgrown weed should be what? Cut down to the minimum level. You know, by the time we ensure that the environment is safe for people to live, you understand? Life of people, what? Will be prolonged. Mm. You know, diseases will be minimized. Mm. You understand? Uh, lifespan of people, you understand, will be elongated. Mm. You know, these are what we need to put in place. You understand? For longevity. You know, and we believe that God on our side is mercy, is uh, precious blood. Also, we uh, do the need to over our lives. Okay, so now when the person is sick, how would this person know that, oh, I think I, I have Lassa? fever or something because there's no difference between last half fever and having malaria or yeah, having that's, that's why, normal that's regular why, that's why diagnosis is very important we have we have some uh, health institutes that are saddled with that for example in our university in Atron, they could conduct the test oh. you know that's not all hospital has that mechanism you know that the instrument uh, to carry out the diagnosis you understand so but there are uh, there are some hospitals, like in usage now, the diagnosis could be conducted, you understand, if a diagnosis could be conducted. Also in our university, you know, uh, at our laboratory center, the, the, the diagnosis, I mean, they could carry out the diagnosis. So, you know, so as soon as such is detected, the first thing to do is to isolate the person, get the uh, uh, blood for mm. laboratory test. All right, we have our caller, uh, Lawal. Thank you for calling back. Hello. All right, we lost that call there. Please do send us an SMS or you can get to uh, tell us what your question is all about. Uh, be, your, be your brother's keeper and um, ensure that this information is thoroughly passed on to other individual around you. You know, there was a time we were talking about last afternoon and someone said, what if you have a neighbor that is very stubborn and dirty? <laughs> Should you report such person? Absolutely. So that's why the enforcers are positioned. By God's grace, like on Cam Grand, we are enforcers. We can prosecute. You understand? We can really? seal, yeah, we can seal up an environment. But before we do that, we first of all et educate, which we are doing now. We issue what we call oral warning, which we are we were back upon. Thereafter, there's what we call uh, uh, abatement notice that we as well issued. You understand? That we compare you to what uh, 
whatever we have observed as a nuisance now or nuisances that within the stipulated period of time you are to either cut down your overgrow weeds hmm. which we have seen harboring dangerous reptiles or dangerous organisms you understand hmm. which could be as of a threat okay. to your to your neighbors or to yourself hmm. do you understand the same thing you know general uh, disinfection do you understand hmm. so if you Take care of your environment. For example, you have deratterized your environment, both mm -hmm. in and out of your environment, you've mm -hmm. disinfected. And your neighbor failed to do us. What happened is that, that your neighbor becomes a place becomes a source of what breeding place. Breeding place. You understand? Mm -hmm. To threat the head of uh, yourself and the other people that have done theirs. You mm -hmm. understand? So that's why we move around. We we'll ask questions. Have you disinfected your environment? Mm -hmm. And if you have done your disinfection, then we need the, to see the evidence mm. of doing that. Because after each exercise, we issue a cycle of deratization. Mm. You understand? So we advocate for corporate uh, uh, cooperation of everybody. Okay. So because health of all is the health of all. Mm. You understand? If an infectious breakout, you know, in an environment, you understand? Life of people are in threat and mm. danger. You understand? That's why before we have issue of outbreak of disease, we try at all costs that at the local level, you understand that the needful be done, which is a general okay. uh, advocacy, advocacy and, and awareness. Cleanliness. All right, we have another caller. Please, hello. Please go ahead with your question. Go ahead with your question, sir. Hello? Yes, I can hear you. Please go ahead with your question. Hello? My question is, uh, what, hello? what is the organization that is Ericon, Environmental Health of the Regulation Council? What are they to release the quack outside there? What are they? Hello, sir. You are trying to listen to your television. Kindly mute it or reduce question. it so that we can hear your question very well. Hello? All right. I think now, we'll... I, if I can just extract a few of these uh, yeah. questions. Now, Environmental Registration Council of Nigeria is a regulated body uh, agency uh, that is being empowered by the federal government of Nigeria to regulate the activities of environmental health under the Ministry of, uh, of, under the Ministry of uh, Environment. You know. mm -hmm. So part of what the uh, organization, the agency uh, does is to regulate the activities of environmental health, mm -hmm. you know, ensure that people that carry out day-to-day uh, -day activities of environmental health are being regulated and the line says the officer, definitely you may want to say what other things have they been doing. Mm. Uh, a lot uh, are what environmental health regulation body does. Mm. You know, they control pest, contr uh, pest, uh, pest uh, organization. Okay. Those people that carry out pest, uh, mm. act pest control activities, mm. they as well saddle them uh, with uh, controlling their activities. So they regulate them, they license them, for example, now before you carry out pest control in an environment, either you, you have it as, a, uh, as an organization, you are involved in pest control uh, activities, this body also regulates uh, people that carry out uh, pest control. Okay. You understand? So Thank you so much. Are, we have James. So they are regulators. From, okay, James from Abuja. Hello, James. Yeah, good morning. Yes, thank you for calling. Please go ahead with your question. <clears throat> yeah, I've been listening to the program. Very interesting. Thank you. Um, I have this question. The expert has said some of the preventive measures he has said are, I largely includes clearing of overgrown weeds and uh, mm. prevent the breeding of um, rodents, which are the carriers for um, this dangerous disease. Then we have, from what we see, what we read, we have people health workers, uh, other people in the society, areas where they could have contact with uh, rodents, contracting this disease, so, which means it is trapped. What are the other measures that the larger society, apart from those who are living in areas or in environments 
that uh, they can get in contact. So what other measures can we take? Like we have COVID-19 now, we have to wear face masks, disinfect our hands and all of that. So what measures can the general public take mm. to avoid contact um, with this dangerous disease? Thank you. All right. Thank you, Mr. James. That's our last caller for today. All Thank right, you. Sir. Thank you. Part of the measures are, number one, like we said, ensure that you practice hygiene. You know, wash your hand properly before you eat. We mm. take care of uh, uh, microbes. We take care of uh, virus. Ensure that you disinfect your hand with detergent. Ensure that you cover all food items, particularly leftover food. You understand? And if you suspect that rats had, uh, you know, invaded your environment, that's dedicated on your food item. You could see the droppings of rat, you know, or you re urinate on your food item, discard such a food. And ensure that food are properly warmed before you consume. You understand? And like we said, health education is a continuous exercise. Et with the information you've had now, pass this information across to us, particularly people at the rural area, mm. people at, uh, you know, the low level. Uh, uh, community, you understand, we should help them at all called disinfect them. The government should be able to do what we call general disinfestation, what we call general deratization of the environment. The drainage should be properly clean at all times. Overgrow, we should be properly cut down at all. And we advocate more importantly for people that consume uh, bush meat, mm. you understand, ensure that it's thoroughly cooked and mm. a suspected uh, uh, animal, you know, should be discarded. Mm. Uh, and we also advocate for discouragement of deforestation. Okay. You understand? People should not uh, cut down uh, uh, trees anyhow. People should not just burn bushes anyhow because all these organisms want to survive. Yeah. They look for the nearest place of our board. All right. Thank you so much, sir. It's good to have you on this program. You've given us so much information. I'm sure you'll be coming more often. You know, there are other things uh, that we also also need to look at. Uh, there was, uh, something just came to my mind that we still need to talk about cockroaches mm -hmm. and um, yeah, war geckos. Yeah, there are a lot of them. There are a lot of them that, you know, can, can, that can transmit one disease or the other into our body. Yes, All right. Yes. Thank you so much, sir. God bless you. We'll wrap it up with a prayer from thank you. Thank you so much. Father, I want to thank you once again thank because you, you, you started well with us and we're thanking you because you are handing with us. Thank you for as many that have had this information. Lord, we pray, particularly for as many that have been infected with this disease and all other diseases, that the healing touch of God will reach out to them in the name of Jesus. Amen. And as many, oh God, that have not given their life to you, Baba, we ask through this medium that the light of salvation will shine across to them in the name of Jesus. Amen. We pray for those, O oh God, TV, that you, God Almighty, will continue to keep this organization Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. We pray for RCCG, particularly our Father, the Lord, Pastor E. E. Adeboye, and Mommy Folo Adeboye, Baba, please uphold them to the head Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Everyone in this studio, Baba, give them outstanding blessing, Amen. outstanding miracle. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. I pray. Amen. Thank Lord. you so much, sir, once thank again. To so everyone who has been part of Healthy Living, we want to say a big thank you to you. If you're called or you've sent in text messages, we appreciate all your call and text messages. To the director, to the CCU, to um, the everyone, uh, to the camera crew, to the engineers, uh, to the MCL, to everyone who has put in one effort or the other to make this program come alive. We appreciate you and God will reward you all in Jesus' name. Like I said, you can get to watch this edition on our YouTube channel or if you missed any of our programs and you wish to go back and watch, get to watch us on uh, Dove TV is on all uh, social media. Get to watch us and watch interesting programs. And if God has laid it in your heart to sponsor any of our programs, please feel free to be part of this family. God bless you and keep your home safe in Jesus' name. Uh, next week is another exciting edition where we'll be having Dr. Uh, Kaya Deabayami here with us in the house. Uh, we'll be talking about uh, a very, you know, interesting topic. So please keep it a date with us and do not um, forget that. God bless you. My name remains Oluwafemi Odunton. Have a fantastic and a glorious day ahead of you. Amen. Bye-bye.